Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at Bridges transition model. Now Bridges transition model is a three-stage model that enables you to understand and manage the human side of change more effectively. All organizations must change to survive. If you continue doing what you've always done, your organization will eventually become outdated, uncompetitive and obsolete. Thus, Change is inevitable and essential in every organization. Now, as a leader, when you think about any change initiative, it's natural to think first about the outcome you're trying to achieve and then create a plan to get you there step by step. Now, you then have to execute the steps contained within that plan to reach your destination. Unfortunately, approaching organizational change in this way can often lead to failure. To understand why, you need to understand a concept at the core of Bridges transition model, the difference between change and transition. So firstly, change. Change is external to people within the organization and happens to them whether they like it or not. There are many types of organizational change, including a merger or acquisition, creating and launching a new product and implementing a new business strategy. Change is concerned with outcomes. Next, we have transition. This is internal. So if change was external, then transition is internal. Transition is the internal psychological process that change puts people through. It is how people feel as they process and come to terms with the new situation that change brings about. A transition occurs in the course of every attempt to change. Now, unfortunately, most leaders concentrate on change and assume that transition will happen simply because the change is happening. This, however, isn't the case. Now, change can happen very quickly, whereas transition usually takes longer. So the model is based on the idea that change will only be successful if employees are supported through the transition they experience during the change. So essentially, you need to bring people with you if you want your change initiative to succeed. Now, the Bridges transition model helps organization manage change successfully by mapping out the human response to change over three stages, which are ending, losing and letting go. So allowing people to let go and say goodbye to old ways. The neutral zone, the in-between time when the old is no more, but the new hasn't yet arrived. And finally, the new beginning the confused time when people begin to engage in their new future. So as you can see from the image, the three stages aren't discrete and they can coexist at the same time within the change. You can also see how the relative importance of each stage changes as time goes by through the change. Now, quickly, before we move on, you may also see Bridges transition model drawn as you see here, to show how employee productivity changes as you progress through the transition, through the change. And finally, it's worth noting that the greater your seniority within your organization, the more quickly you're likely to move through the transition process. And that's often because you understand the need for change long before others in your organization do. Now, this means that as a senior manager, it can be really easy for you to forget that others will take longer to transition. So let's dig a little deeper into each of the three stages. So firstly, ending, losing and letting go. People have to let go of how things were and they also have to let go of how they were. Now, some things they might need to leave behind include relationships, team members, processes, etc. This stage often percolates feelings of resistance and emotional upheaval as employees are forced to give up something they are familiar and comfortable with. So just think how you would feel if you'd been happily doing the same job for 20 years and suddenly everything was changing. Common feelings for people to feel during this stage include denial, anger, fear, loss and disorientation. So how do you lead people through stage one? Well, people can't accept the change until they accept the old way is ending. If you attempt to push through change, 
without acknowledging people's emotions, you're likely to encounter resistance throughout the whole change process. Now, mechanisms leadership teams can use to manage this stage include, allow your team time to reflect, try to get everyone talking about how they feel, map out the different negative emotions people might feel, and create a response to each. Create a clear and coordinated communications plan explaining why the change has to happen and what the future will look like. Finally, establish communication channels for people to discuss how they feel. Highlight where possible any positive benefits to the individual once the change has been completed. Stage two, the neutral zone. In this stage, people have accepted the old way has ended, but find themselves unable to move forward. They are entering the neutral zone an in-between stage full of uncertainty and confusion. This in-between stage is so full of uncertainty and confusion that simply coping takes almost all of people's effort. Now, common feelings during this stage are low morale, resentment towards the change and skepticism of the change. Now, despite the challenges of this stage, it is in this stage that people create and try new ways of working. So it can actually be a time of innovation and renewal. So in terms of leading people through this stage, it's very likely productivity and morale will be at their lowest ebb during this stage. People may feel overburdened with a higher workload as changes start to be implemented. And these feelings are perfectly normal. The other thing people are doing is creating new processes and learning what their new role is And it's easy during this phase for them to lose sight of the end goal. Now, mechanisms leadership teams should use include ensure the change is carefully planned to avoid surprises, aim for early quick wins to demonstrate progress and build momentum, remove barriers and blockers quickly as they appear, communicate regularly to remind the team of the goals, give feedback to individuals on how they are performing regarding the change, and encourage them to talk about how they feel, and finally help people manage their workloads. Stage three, the new beginning. Now, if the neutral zone is handled with care, people can realize that they can be positive actors in the change rather than simply being subject to the change. They are transitioning to the new beginning phase. Now, This phase is characterized by people embracing the new ways of working. And this can be really scary because people are leaving old ways of doing things behind that they were competent at and they're starting to work in a new and unfamiliar way. And this is especially true or especially scary if the organization's culture has historically been to punish mistakes. Now, if you manage this phase correctly, then common feelings can be high energy, openness to learning and renewed commitment. In terms of managing people through this stage, then the biggest challenge for management during this phase is to sustain the change and mechanisms they can use to do this include celebrate getting to this stage as a team, communicate regularly to reinforce the benefits of the change, use tools such as management by objectives, to create a system of consistency around targets, incentives, and training. And finally, ensure individuals understand the importance of their role within the new organization. Now, there are a number of advantages and disadvantages associated with Bridges transition model. So in terms of advantages, we have it focuses on the human aspects of change and not just the planning aspects of change. Secondly, it takes a personal approach to change by taking the time and energy to help each individual adapt to the change. And finally, it can work well in conjunction with planning oriented models such as Cotter's change model, sometimes called Cotter's eight step model. In terms of disadvantages, then it doesn't provide step by step rules for implementing change. Instead, it more kind of gives guidelines for handling the human side of change. And finally, the model is too narrow in scope as there is more to managing organizational change than simply taking care of the human elements or the human side of change. So in summary, 
Bridges' transition model is based on the subtle difference between change and transition. It's a three-stage model, and those three stages are endings, the neutral zone, and new beginnings. And finally, the model is based on the idea that change will only be successful if employees are supported through the transition they experience during change. So that's it for this lesson. Really hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.